Amen. God bless you. How's everyone doing today? Doing good? Amen. I'm going to ask Brother Angelo to come and pray for the opening opening prayer. Is he here? No? All right. One of you brothers want to come volunteer? All right. Come on, Brother Reuben. May you please borrow your head, please? Lord Jesus, Heavenly Father, Lord. We have Sunday school, Lord. We unite together, Lord. Lord, as we have fellowship, Lord, with the. Lord, we we praise you all with our heart, Lord. Lord, we'll never ever lose lose your presence, Lord. We'll we'll always have faith, Lord. Protect his service and protect his church, Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Now I'm going to ask you to please stand. We're going to sing Joshua fought the battle with Jericho. Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, Jericho. Jericho and Joshua fought the battle of Jericho and the walls came tumbling down. You may talk about your men of Gideon, you may talk about your men of Saul, but there's none like the good old Joshua in the battle of Jericho. Oh, Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, and the walls came tumbling down. Then up the walls of Jericho, he marched with spears in hand. Goes up the ram horn, Joshua cried, for the battle is in our hands. Oh, Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, and the walls came tumbling down. Then the lamb ram sheep horn began to blow, and the trumpet began to sound. What command the children a shout and the walls came tumbling down Oh Joshua fought the battle of Jericho 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 Joshua fought the battle of Jericho and the walls came tumbling down Oh Joshua fought the battle of Jericho Jericho, Jericho Joshua fought the battle of Jericho And the walls came tumbling down Amen, can you give the Lord a round of applause? Amen Now this next song we're going to sing It's uh, Joy of the Lord is my strength And when we say strength I want you guys to do your muscles like this, alright? Can, can you guys do it? Yeah? yeah? Alright the joy of the Lord is my strength. 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 Oh, the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. He gives me living water and I thirst no more. He gives me living water, and I thirst no more. He gives me living water, and I thirst no more. The 
joy of the Lord in my strength. All right, now this next part, it says, he fills my soul with laughter. So when we say, he fills my soul with laughter, I want you guys to go, ha, 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 ha. All right? All right, so we'll do the voice first. Are you guys ready? Yeah? All right. He fills my soul with laughter. Ha, 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 ha. He fills my soul with laughter. Ha, 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 ha. He fills my soul with laughter. Ha, 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 ha. The joy of the Lord is my strength. All right, girls, you're next. He fills my soul with laughter. He fills my soul with laughter. He fills my soul with laughter. Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord. our brother A.J. Guetta to come and pray for the petitions and offering. May you please bow your heads. Dear Lord Jesus, Heavenly Father, Lord, please help everyone that and the petitions, Father, with all their needs, Lord. They just need you right now, Father, and bless the service and the preacher, Lord. And we love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. And you may be seated. We're going to sing, The Devil is a Sly Old Fox. The devil is a sly old fox. If I could catch him, I'd put him in a box. I lock the door and throw away the key for all the tricks he's played on me. I'm so glad I have salvation. I'm so glad I have salvation. I'm so glad I have salvation. And I'm trusting in the Lord. The devil is a mean old goat. If I could catch him, I'd put him in a boat. I'd sink that boat to the bottom of the sea for all the tricks he's played on me. I'm so glad I've got salvation. I'm so glad I've got salvation. I'm so glad I've got salvation. And I'm trusting in the Lord. I'm so glad I've got salvation. I'm so glad I've got salvation. I'm so glad I have salvation. And I'm trusting in the Lord. Amen. At this time, we're going to be receiving our ministers for today. We're going to first have our brother Abraham Perez and our Lorenzo Garcia Jr. So I'm going to ask if you would please stand. With this song, I Love Him Better Every Day, we're going to be introducing our ministers. Oh, I love him better every day. I love him better every day. Close by his S I D E, I will A B I D E. I love him better.
like to like to thank you all for coming this evening. And God bless all of you that are here on Internet Hookup. If you do, please turn into Judges, the, the 13th chapter. We'll be reading the first verse to the fifth. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines forty years. And there was a certain man of Zorah of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and bare not. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold now, thou art barren, and bearest not, but not shall conceive, and bear a son. Now therefore beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine nor strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing. For lo, thou shalt conceive, and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. At the word, word, at the word of the Lord, you may be seated. We start with Samson when he's going to a town called Timoth, where he meets this young lady you know, we get to know her name, though. But we know that she's a daughter of a Philistines. But this woman does please Samson very well. So Samson goes to his father and mother, and he tells them if he can take this woman to be his wife. But they tell him if he has any interest in any other girls in their, amongst their people. But he does not. So... They go to Timoth to go meet the young lady, while Samson, as, as the Bible describes it, goes down, where he comes upon this young lion, and he, he ends up beating this lion at battle because the lion attacked him, where then we meet up with Samson again, where he goes and goes to his new wife and goes and takes her. But when he's walking, he comes upon the lion, and he sees that a, for, a bees have gone to the corpse. And then he sees that they, ha, they made the sweetness stuff. He gets it, and he eats upon it. And then, it, of course, it's honey, where he gives some to his father and mother. And, of course, then we see Samson again at the wedding where they say that he has companions to be with there with, with them. Where then he tells where then he tells the Philistines, because the Philistines were there also. He tells the Philistines, I shall put forth a riddle. And the riddle goes like this. And if you do want to read the riddle, the riddle will be located in Judges 14.14. 14. And they say, out of the eater come forth meat, and out of the strong come forth sweetness. The Philistines could not, could not know the riddle. They were confused of the riddle. So days pa they, Samson said, if they get the riddle right, then they get 30, they get 30 garments and, and cloth, I think, and cloth. And if they win, then he has to get them for him. And if they win, then they have to get it for him. On the seventh day, still the Philistines could not figure out the riddle. So what they do is they go to the wife, Samson's wife, and they threaten her if they, they told her, if she does not tell us the answer to the riddle, 
then she and her, then her father shall be burnt with fire. So she goes up upon Samson and she tells him, Samson, thy has not loved me, thy has hated me, because thy shall not tell me the answer to the riddle. He tells her, I have not even told my own family the answer to the riddle. But he sees that she's weeping, so he tells her the answer to the riddle anyways. So he goes and meets up with the Philistines, and the Philistines tell him, because he tells them, what is the answer to thy riddle? Then, he, then they tell him, what is stronger than a lion, and what is sweeter than honey? Where then he finds out that his wife told him the answer of the riddle. So what he does is that he goes out to go look for the cloths and garments, 30 of them. Where then he stumbles upon this campsite where, they're tr mistre where he finds Philistines mistreating his people. So what he does is that he kills them and takes their cloths and garments. And then he, gives, and then he goes back to visit his wife and give them the cloths and garments. Where then he finds out that his wife has, given has been given away to another companion. Where then he gets mad and grabs 300 foxes and wraps sticks to their, between their tails with fire and sends them to the Philistines' wheat field, where then burns everything. Then, then the Philistines said, how come, like, how come is Samson treats us like this? Then they think to themselves, then we should treat him the same way he's been treating us. So they go and they kill his wife and his father. They burnt them with fire. Where then he gets mad again and kills thousands of men with the jawbone of an ass. Where then he then he goes into hiding. A harlot hides, hides him. And this is where we find Samson again because he goes to Gaza and he gets hide by a harlot because the Gazites want to kill him. They say if they do not find him, then they'll try to kill him by morning. But they end up finding Samson, and Samson takes off. But to show him how powerful he is, he takes the door of Gaza and takes it with him, which frightens them all. <laughs> then this is where Samson stumbles upon a town this town was called Sorek, where he met Delilah. Delilah was not a very nice person, as we all know. The, the Philistines promised her a lot of money. Can any of you figure out how much they promised her? Yes? A thousand? Close. <laughs> 30 shekels of silver. Um, 400 pieces of silver. Does anybody have another answer? No? It was 1,100 pieces of silver that they promised her, each from the guard. Every guard, each gave her 11 pieces of silver, but not yet, because she still had to find out what made Samson strong. So she goes to Samson, and she tells him, Samson, tell me, I pray thee, what is, where does thy strength come from? Where is thy weakness from? He tells her, well, if you wrap me around with this core that has not been dried, then I shall be weak like any other man. So she does that to him. But where he finds, where she says, Samson, the Philistines are upon thee. And he gets up and he snaps it. 
actually, the Bible describes it like he snapped it like it was nothing. So she gets mad at, at him at the next day, and she tells him, Thou hast mocked me and told me lies. She says, Samson, I tell thee and pray thee, where does thy weakness come from? Where does thy strength come from? He tells her, if you wrap me around with the rope that has, not, that has been new, that's new, then he shall be weak like any other man. So she does that, and she tells Samson again, Samson, the Philistines are upon thee, where he gets up and he snaps the ropes like it's thread. <laughs> then she tells him again, Samson, thy has mocked me and lied to me again. Where does thy strength and weakness come from? So he tells her, if you put these web in, you've put webs into my hair, then I shall be weak like any other man. She does that to him. He gets up, and he just beats them all over again. So then, the next day, she tells him, Samson, thou hast mocked me, thou hast hated me, thou hast not loved me, thou hast told me three lies. Where does thy weakness come from, Samson? And he sees that she's really mad, so he tells her with all his heart, when, before I was born, my, the angel came to my mother and told, told her, Thou ha there shall not be any razor upon my head, that my hair shall not be shaved. So she sees that he says that with all, hers, all his heart. So what she does, she goes to the Philistines and tells them. So the Philistines go there at night where, where Delilah makes Samson sleep on, hers, on her lap. And then she forces a man to shave off Samson's hair. Then she tells Samson, Samson, Philistines are upon thee. Where he gets up and he tries to fight back, but he cannot. The Philistines take him down and they put out his eyes where he can no longer see. So what Samson does is that he, that he goes he goes to Gaza. They take him to Gaza, where they put him in jail. He cannot see. So the guard takes him and takes him to the pillars. But he tells the guard, please lean me, let me lean on the pillars, for I cannot see. So that's what he does. And then he tells the Lord a prayer. Now, does anybody know the prayer? <laughs> Nobody? He tells the Lord, oh, Lord, do remember me one last time. Where there is a message that Brother Branham, that Brother Branham preached, which was called, Just One Last Time. And, the, and he says, Lord, please let me die with these Philistines. Because all the men and Philistines and women came to see Samson that day. There was thousands of people there. So what he does, he gets to the pillars, puts his two hands there, and he pushes them, which kills all of them, including Samson. I'd like to thank you all for being a good audience. God bless. Amen, amen. God bless you all. Amen. Brother, God bless Brother Abraham. Amen. We, got a, we have a preacher amongst us, huh? He did a pretty, pretty awesome job. Would you agree? Yes. Amen.
Amen. Are the, kids, are the children happy today? Yes? Can I hear an amen from you all? Okay, that, that, was, that was a little weak, okay? I know you guys can do way better than that. Can, we, can I hear a loud amen as loud as you can? All righty, all right. It looks like you guys are happy. I'm glad you guys are happy. And I, uh, I was asked yesterday if I could speak to the children. And I prayed and I prayed and I prayed yesterday. Um, and I said, what can I, tell, what can I tell your children, Lord? What is it that I could tell them? And the thought came to me of the Ten Commandments. And the commandment, one second. You hear me? Okay, even better. Thanks. Um, so it was, it was the commandment of honor thy father and thy mother. How many know this commandment? Yeah? Okay, I'm going to need, I, I need some help, okay? Who, who's willing to help me today? You're willing to help me? Okay, I'm going to ask you a question. Um, I'm going to, okay, brother, what, what, what do you think honor thy father and thy mother? What, what, what does the word honor mean, number one? What does that mean? What does it mean? Please them? Okay, good. That's, that's a good answer. To obey? Uh, that's a very good answer also. How about any of the girls? Okay, what, what, is the, what does honor mean? To be, obey and be respectful? That's perfect. To be respectful, right? It's to it's to to have the utmost, the highest respect for them, right? And and uh, I uh, can I I want to be honest with you with you kids today, okay? I just I just wanna well, wanna speak to you all from the bottom of my heart, because one time I was your age, okay? And I was a little kid and playing around, and I I have my my I'm lucky to still have my dad and my and my mom still alive, but if I'm being honest, I. There's been some times when I've been, when I was a kid, and, and I got mad at my parents. I, I would get mad at them sometimes. Has, has any, have any of you kids ever, have you, any of you kids ever gotten mad at your parents? Okay, okay, we're being honest, right? Are we being honest? Okay, raise your hand if you've, if you've been mad before at your parents. Yeah? Okay, okay, thank, thank you for the honesty. Um, and I remember a few times yelling at my my mom, I, I yelled at my mom, and I remember her slipper, right, right away. She, she'd take out that slipper and just, and just smack through that slipper right away. But we need to honor, honor our parents, right? Why, why would God, I'm curious, why would God even, why would he even have us, why would he even have this as a commandment? Does anybody want to guess why God would have this as a commandment? To live a better life, okay, and have more years of your life. That's that's that. Yep, that's right on with on track with the Bible. That's that's awesome, brother. He put it in the tablets, right? Yes, that that's right. Any anybody else? Okay, that, that's, a, that's a good answer also. So, so I asked myself the question, why, why would God put this in, in the commandments, okay? And we all, we all honor our Lord Jesus Christ, amen? Would you, you guys honor God? Yeah? Okay, I honor God too, right? And, and, and we have to understand that with our parents, it doesn't matter if, 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 if your parents come to church or if they don't come to church. When it says, honor thy father and thy mother, it doesn't. It doesn't give any any stip, uh, stipulations. I not understand that. Uh, it, it doesn't give anything. It doesn't say because your parents are good or because your parents are bad or nothing. It just says honor your father and your mother, because that's who God chose to bring you into this world. God chose them to bring you into this world, and by them bringing you into this world, you're here sitting down right now, and you're so so privileged 
to be listening to what you heard this morning. You heard our pastor preach, and, and he was giving words of life, right? You hear the message of the hour. You hear our, the prophet. You hear the ministry. You guys are so privileged. You guys are so valuable to God that he gave you guys parents that he would want you to honor and, and, and love and take care of them. Now, let me, God, God, sent me, God sent me today to give you guys a message, okay? And the message that, that, that he wants to give you today is that he understands you guys. He, I, don't, I don't know if, I mean, you guys are kids, and, and sometimes we hear, we hear some really, really good messages, and, and sometimes they might be a little bit hard for, for us to understand, right? Sometimes the, the messages that come forth, you're like, it, it might go over our head sometimes, but... But God, through our pastor, has put children's service because he te- he's telling you that he understands you guys, that he wants to. He, wants, he understands you, but in turn, he wants you to understand him too. And that's why he gave us a pastor. That's why he gave us a, a prophet. That's why he gave us the message of the hour. That's why we do what we do, and, 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 and he loves you guys with all his heart. Now, let me ask you a question. Maybe, I, I just, I just want to be, be uh, like I was saying, I want to be honest with you guys, okay? Maybe, uh, who, who doesn't have their parents here? Who doesn't, maybe their parents don't come to church or brother? Okay, maybe, maybe your parents don't come, right? Uh, if I'm being honest, you know, I didn't have my parents come to church either, okay? I didn't have my parents come to church either. But you know what? God, God still loves you. And God still thinks of you as very, very valuable, okay? Now, what are, what are some things that we could do maybe to, maybe we can help our parents. Maybe we could help our parents out. It, can, I, can I get some suggestions? What could we do to, to be good and help our parents? Can I get some, can anybody help me with that? Pray for them? Uh, that's, that's a really, really good one. Really, really good one. Remember that. Brother Brown says you can do, you can do too much of everything except pray. So praying is very, very good one, okay? Brother? Listen to the message? Yep, that, that's, another, that's another very good one. And any of the girls? Any ideas what you could do to help your parents? Anything at all? No? Any more of the boys? Yeah, exactly. Because you kids, whether your parents come to church or they don't come to church, remember that God lives inside of you guys, okay? Jesus lives inside of you guys. In each and every one of you guys, Jesus lives in you guys. And you guys sometimes can be the model in your home or the example of what Jesus is. Now, who wants to see some examples of of Jesus? You want to see some examples? Okay. All right. I'm going to need some help, though. Who wants to help me? Yeah? Okay, I'm going to ask, can we give the kids a, a piece of paper, please? I got some helpers here. And everybody's going to get one, one piece of paper, okay? And uh, I'm going to, I need somebody, uh, Brother Abraham, you look like my guy over there. Come on, come on, come on up here, Brother Abraham. Now, here's some examples, guys, of what we could do to, to be like Jesus, okay? To be like Jesus in our homes is we can, we want to do, do the exact same thing that, that he told us to do. We want to actually do it, right? So, back in the day, who wants to know back in the days when Jesus walked the earth? You know, when, you know what, what would happen if you did something really bad and, and you sinned? You know what would happen? Is that they would do something called, they would stone you, okay? So that means they'd get some, they would get a bunch of people, and they'd get some really, really big rocks, and they would throw these rocks at the people that, that did bad, okay? So I'm going to ask it, Brother Abraham, if you don't mind, if you can be the really bad person today, <laughs> come on, come right up here. And I, okay, who wants, okay, let me see your paper, hold your paper up. Everybody hold your paper up, Okay. Now get it and crumble it into a ball. Okay. 
All righty. So now we got, okay. So I need, a, I need some volunteers here. Okay. You don't even know what I'm going to ask yet. Now you guys are already wanting to come up here. I need some volunteers that want to cast their stone at this guy that's done Man. so bad. Okay? So everybody wants to come up. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask, okay, look, we have two lines right here, okay? So we don't want to get, we don't want to hurt him, okay? We're just using this as an example, okay? So I'm going to ask if two girls can come up here. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, let's have these, the two, first two girls over here. Come on, come on up here. All righty. And we're going to ask our, we're going to ask our, our, Bad guy here, if he can turn around, because we don't want anybody to get in the face. Okay? So just, just turn around and come right back over here. Okay. So these are stones, okay? And this is, this is what they would do back in the days of, of Jesus, okay? And we're doing this as an example so that you guys can understand how Jesus thought. He thought differently, okay, than everybody else. Okay? But this is the bad guy, okay? Go ahead and get your rocks. And throw, throw those rocks at him. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. So you guys get down. All right. I need two. Let's have two boys now. Um, my, bro, my little brother right here. Come on up. You have your rock? Okay. Uh, my little brother right over here. Come right up here. You have your rock? Okay. Stand that way, okay, keep going, all right, big target, okay, all righty, so there's your stones, you got your stones, okay, go ahead, <laughs> okay, all righty, good job, good job, okay, guys, so it looks like you all want to come up here, but we don't have time right now to have everybody come up, but that was just an example of what they would do. Okay, now when Jesus saw this, when Jesus saw this, he would say, wait a minute, wait a minute. What do you, actually, you know what, let me do, do me a favor. Can you, give, can you give them another piece of paper and a pen, please? All right, we're going to, well, I'm going to, thank you. I'm going to ask, uh, I'm going to ask for another favor, okay? And hold on to your papers, guys, okay? I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask for another favor. I want. Everybody, everybody to, to, to think, since you were born, let's just let's, let's say that, okay? Since you were born, I want you to write a number, I want you to write a number on this piece of paper, okay, of how many things you, how many things you've done, do you think that you've done bad, okay? It could be one, it could be a hundred, it could be a thousand, it could be five thousand, any number. Put, you just, just give me a number, Okay? So, 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 write down a number of, of, of and remember, we got to be honest, right? We got to be honest. So, write down a number of what you think, how many times you've been bad, and it could be anything, okay? So, go ahead and write that number down for me. Okay, raise your hand when you're done. You're done? Okay. Okay, so I'm going to come down here, and I want you to do me a favor, okay? I want you to hold your paper up so I can see your number, okay? Don't, don't, don't face your number that way, because mom, your mom and dad are going to see how many times we've been bad, okay? So let me see. Let me see the number. Okay? Wow. Okay. Jeez. Okay. 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 Wow, we got some honest kids. Real, real honest kids. Okay. What? I have a bigger piece of paper next time. But good job, kids. I like that you did that, okay? So, everybody, who's done wrong here? Everybody's done wrong? Okay. So, Remember when we threw this? Remember when we threw this paper at at the brother, or the rocks? When we threw the rocks at him, 
Jesus looked at that and he said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't throw any rocks. Don't, don't, don't do anything bad to him because we ourselves have done wrong. So that's what he was trying to get at. He was trying to show you that don't throw at anybody because we ourselves have done, done wrong, okay? So, so with that being said, kids, I want you guys to hold on to that. Always remember that, that always be nice to one another. To the brothers and sisters, you always be nice to everybody. Even if they don't come to church, you be nice to people. You be, you be a Christian. To be a Christian is to be Christ-like, which is to be a, a lady and a gentleman to people. You always be nice. And remember, you guys, remember that any time that you feel like, like you're going to do something bad or, or you're going to talk about somebody or you're going to do something bad to somebody or, or you're going to get mad for whatever reason, always remember that piece of paper and the number that you wrote on it. Remember that. Okay, kids? Um, so we still got it. We have, we have a little bit of time left. So how many, how many love the Lord? you still love the Lord? Amen. Now, in finishing here, I wanted to share with you guys something that um, I want to share with you guys something, and I want to see if you guys can relate with this, okay? If you guys understand me, okay? And I want you to raise your hand if you understand me, okay? Number one, how many here have a grandma? You have a grandma? Grandma? Okay, cool. Uh, how many love their grandma? Yeah? Okay. Um, what's, your, what, what's your grandma's name? Yeah. You ever talk to your grandma? You do? You know your grandma's name? Martha. Martha? Okay. What's your grandma's name? Michelle? Okay. What's your grandma's name? What is it? Lana? Okay. So we love our grandmas, right? I, I, I had a grandma too once, and I, I loved my grandma. I loved her to pieces. Um, but I want to share with you guys something. How many, okay. Who here, does your grandma cook good? Does anybody's grandma cook good? Anybody at all? Okay, my, my, grandma, my grandma cooks really, really good, too. She, she cooked very good. She, she passed away, but she cooked very good. One of my favorite things to do when I would stay over there at my grandma's was she would make me a sandwich that was the most incredible sandwich that anybody could ever have. It was just an incredible sandwich. So my grandma's been gone, though. She's been gone for, I don't know, seven years or so. So the other day, I was home, and I was just, I was wanting this sandwich Oh, so bad. I wanted this sandwich, and you know what? I said, you know what? The heck with this. I'm going to go to the store. I'm going to go to, to uh, the grocery store, and I bought everything that my grandma would buy, everything, the same bread, the same meats, the same mayonnaise, the same everything, everything, everything. And I went home, and I started cooking everything up and, and putting stuff together and the whole nine yards, and I went, and I sat down, and I started eating my sandwich, and it was the same thing my grandma would make. And as I was eating it, about, about halfway through the sandwich, I said to myself, this sandwich tastes nothing like my grandma's sandwich. <laughs> nothing, nothing did it taste like my grandma's sandwich. And I made everything exactly the same, so I couldn't figure it out. Why in the world would my sandwich not taste like my grandma's sandwich? And I remembered that I was lacking a certain experience that I would have when my grandma was there with me. My grandma would hug me when I was eating, and she would ask me how I was doing. And she was, there was a certain experience to that. Amen. And it's the same thing with Christ, you guys. You kids, as you grow up, you're going to have to get your own experience. Now, you understood me about my grandma because you guys have grandmas. But when you guys get your experience with Christ, then you guys are going to understand that too. So remember your, your father and your mother, you honor your father and your mother because they are, they, they are they're keeping you on a path. They're keeping you on a path to, to get that experience that you need to get with, with the Lord. Okay? Thank you guys very much for your time. God loves you with all his heart, and we all love you with all our hearts too. God bless you all.
God bless you. Um, thank you, Brother Enzo. <laughs> um, Come on, let's give him a clap. There you go. We're going to tag team here. This is my buddy Israel. How many enjoyed the word? Amen. How many learned something? If you, raise, if you learned something, raise your hands. I hope I see everybody's hands up. I, don't, I can't see too well in the back, but how many of you back there learned something? All right. I just want to make sure you, you parents are still awake too because the children, they come to church when we have church and they stay awake. And if they don't, you know, we want to pinch them. So let's make sure we stay awake back there, too, because this is for them. Let's go ahead and sing that song. There it is. We're going to do a little twist on if you're happy and you know it, we're going to sing if you're saved and you know it. Clap your hands. So if you could, please, let's all stand. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your life will really show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're saved and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're saved and you know it, then your life will really show it. clap so quick right and then you stomp your feet how do you stomp your feet how do you stomp your feet there we go and how do you say amen amen, amen. all right so we're gonna try that again we're gonna do all three do all three clap your hands stomp your feet and say amen you guys ready or right, excuse me are you ladies ready sorry are you guys ready are you ready buddy Yes. All right, well, let's do it. There we go. And if you're saved and you know it, do all three. Amen. If you're saved and you know it, do all three. Amen. If you're saved. guys. Let's go ahead. How many are happy? I've heard a lot of parents say they're happy. How many of the kiddos here are happy though? You guys are happy? Who gives you your happiness? I love that answer. Jesus. Well, you know what? Let's go ahead and sing that song then because a synonym or something that is similar to happiness is what's called joy. Who's got joy? Where is it? It's down in my heart. So let's go ahead and sing that. Joy, 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 joy down, down in, in my heart. heart. Thank you. 
Often flowing deep and wide. I believe I'm on key, so if you guys could help me out and sing this right, we'll get it together, right? There we go. I need help. Flowing deep and there it is. But when we sing it, when you say deep, and when we say wide, If you gotta move a little bit, if you gotta move a little bit so that you don't smack someone in the face, let's make sure we don't hurt our brothers or our sisters, okay? So, scoot up a little bit. Stay right there, scoot up a little bit. All right, stay right there, scoot up a little bit. So we're gonna stagger. So if you guys can do the same thing. So stay right there, we'll scoot up a little bit. There we go. And you be able to scoot up a little bit. There we go, and do the same thing. Same thing for you older fellas. Yeah, we got bigger arms when we get a little older, so we got to make sure we don't hit anybody. All right, so I'm going to let the parents, let's, let's have the parents start us off again. Deep and wide, deep and wide, a fountain flowing deep and wide. It's deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Come on, we need full participation. So I see like the first two rows and I see my pastor doing it amazingly. But I, there we go, I see Ben in the back. Let's get everybody involved, right? We gotta be bought in. Deep and wide. it is who said it someone said it back there I heard it father Abraham I know you guys think oh it's David he's gonna sing it again you better believe it because I love it <laughs> so you know that one right buddy? father Abraham father Abraham had many sons there it is and many sons uh, had father Abraham, Abraham. and I, I am one of them and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. Right on. Father Abraham had many sons. And had many sons had Father Abraham. And I am one of them. And so are you.
but I see a couple brothers back there still standing up. <laughs> All right, how many enjoyed that? I know I did. My bones didn't, but I know I did. <laughs> At this time, we're going to ask Brother James to come up. He's going to be given the closing prayer. If you may up, bow your heads. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, thank you for everything you've done, us, done for us today, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to bless us, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this precious children's church that we had today, Lord. Thank you for the word, Lord. May your presence never leave us, Lord. Meanwhile, you're, we're at work, Lord, or at, or at our house, Lord. We love you, Lord. Bless the, bless the brothers in Uganda, Lord. We love you, Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. My God is so great, so strong, and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so great, so strong, and so mighty. 